Okay, this is a 12th video for the counseling module and it's an optional one. I've had a number of people ask for help around the self-awareness model. So I've created this brief video to help you understand the model and to practice it and to see why it matters. So let's start with that last thing first, why it matters. First of all, you really need to be conversant in all the terms we're talking about so that when you're being a therapeutic listener, you can help people to unpack their own narratives, to be able to hear when people are perhaps calling things that are feelings, thoughts or thoughts being feelings. So being able to use these terms effectively will help you to listen and really give your homunculus a good chance to understand where to ask questions and where to do some deciphering. That's really important, especially in cognitive behavioral therapies because a lot of the cognitive behavioral therapies have people examine their thinking as a way of looking at their feelings and behaviors. You need to make sure that you are personally self-aware, or at least it may be a more accurate way of putting this, that you're approaching self-awareness, which we can argue is a lifelong process, so that you can be aware of any biases that you're gonna to bring to your own therapeutic communication, and aware, I think, of interpersonal styles as well, but particularly the values side of things, is, which, is that which we are focused on here. And being experienced in all of this will make you a more comfortable and authentic communicator. People will realize that you can be genuine with them and you'll have that potency that Jacqueline Small talks about. There are really two sides to this self-awareness model that gets spoken about in the workbook or the digital readings I've given you. On the one side, there are beliefs, values, and ethics. And on the other side is thoughts, feelings, or are thoughts, feelings, and actions. And this really matters because the layout sort of suggests something intuitively that matters. Our beliefs can morph into our values and our values are what support our ethics or rules for ourselves. And on this uh, other side, our thoughts are foundational to the way we feel and our feelings are foundational to the way that we act. Remember, if we're feeling pleasure because of something, behaviorists say, well, we're gonna keep doing it because it's reinforcing. And if we feel something's unpleasant or aversive, we're going to go and do the opposite or something else because we want to avoid punishment. We want the negative reinforcement of avoiding something unpleasant. So these things all lead into each other and being able to see how this side of the model affects this side of the model is also important. So let's break into each of those things. Beliefs are simply anything that we hold to be true. They're the facts that we have for ourselves. Now, sometimes we all have the same, or almost all of us have the same factual observation. We might all look out the window and say, it's a sunny day. Um, however, there are people who might assume that their belief is a fact to every person, and it might not be. For example, some of you like rainy days. So if I look out the window and I say, oh, it's a miserable day, some of you might say, no, I don't agree with that belief. So essentially, there are even facts that we don't subscribe to. Really, we could describe his beliefs as opinions, things that we personally hold to be true. Here are some examples. Camping is fun. Hawaii is the most beautiful place on earth. Sushi is gross. And you can examine these and see very simply that lots of people would share different beliefs. For example, I don't think camping is fun anymore. I do think that Hawaii is beautiful, but not the most beautiful. And I think sushi is delicious. So. Beliefs can be very different and very personal. Now, if a belief has weight, it becomes a value, which is good, what we're gonna to go to next. In other words, you can say, and I would encourage you to pause and write this down, all values are beliefs. It is true that anytime a person is using a value, they're also stating a belief. But not all beliefs have weight, and therefore not all beliefs are values. For example, none of these beliefs has anything in them that suggests they are important to me. But if I added a fourth one that said something like this, children should be our number one priority. Now I not only have a belief, but I have a value. You can hear me talking about priority and that should tell you it has weight. And so I wouldn't describe that as a belief in the exercise. I would describe it as a value, even though it's still a belief as well. Just because you value a belief doesn't mean that other people do too. So for example, I might have a value that says it's really important to read a religious text every day. Uh, depending on my religion, it might be the Quran or the Bible, but other people might not share that, even if for me it's really heavy, really important 
really number one in my life. And I can tell you that even though you might think that something is obviously valued by everybody, I guarantee you'll find somebody else who doesn't. So you might, for example, say, nonviolence is best or life is precious. Those are both examples of something that shows weight. You'll find people who don't find life to be terribly valuable and who think that violence is very good. So just because you believe in something and value it doesn't mean others do. Values are beliefs that we hold to be important, as we said, simply emphasizing that here. And you should listen for words, and these aren't the exhaustive list, but listen for words like critical, vital, it's key, we should, it's fundamental, it's my principle, or I prioritize that. And sometimes people communicate the way they feel about something or the weight they give something because of the way that they behave or describe it. So they might say something like, before we get started, the most important thing or the first thing I want to say is this, or they talk about it a lot, or their actions show it because they go out and they do something that really reflects this. For example, if you go to somebody's house and everything is labeled alphabetically, they're probably telling you that they value organization. So here are some examples, and I've underlined the words in these cases that might tell me that these are values. Child welfare is important to me. The rights of victims come first in court. Family time is a vital ingredient of effective childbearing. I believe the children are our future. Thank you, Whitney Houston. Now, you might say something about this is just a belief because the word belief is here, but our future isn't a little thing. She isn't saying the kids need popsicles. She's saying we really have to think about them as our future. And so that suggests to me some weight. Epics are just the rules that we create for ourselves, and sometimes we project those rules onto other people, and that may be a common thing that you find people talking about in your therapeutic communication. They come from our values, as I've said before, but many people don't really know how to say their value. They only say the rule. So for example, they might say, I don't eat any food with a face, and you ask people why, and they get defensive, but they don't feel like describing the value behind it. Sometimes it's the way we ask a flag word like why can do that. But what they probably are saying is, to me, it's really important that we respect animals. Okay, so that's an example of a rule and the value it comes from. Watch for the do's and don'ts, the always and the nevers um, that people use to describe the guiding principles of their life, how they behave is what we're interested in or what they tell you their behavior will be in the future. So here are some examples. Now the part in the parentheses that I've italicized is not the ethic. I'm just showing you in that second part the um, value that it might come from. But the first ethic is I limit my child's screen time. You can tell that that person's living by a rule they've created for themselves and you might imagine that the value behind it is that their child's health comes first and they perceive that child's, uh, that screen time is very bad for children. Another one is the ethic of, I never go to sleep angry with my spouse, a common rule that many people have. If people look at the value behind it, they might say things like that they believe that arguing is bad for a marriage or arguing and then going to sleep is bad for a marriage, but the value behind it is my marriage matters a lot to me. And another one is, we always get a real Christmas tree. Sounds like a real simple statement, but I'll bet you it's a rule people are living by based on a value that they value tradition, that they're considering it to be really important in their lives. So here are some examples for you. I'm going to get you to pause the video and see if you can identify which of those things each of these are, including this, the three first things, beliefs, values, and ethics. Pause, and after you're finished, push play, and you'll see in the next slide how you did. How did you do? If you realize that the first one was a belief, you are in good shape. It doesn't tell me anything about its value and it doesn't give me any idea of what people do about this or the rule they set for themselves. It's just a belief. And um, the next one tells you that it's a value because the word basic is there. So it tells you that people consider it to be a foundational idea. Everybody should have it. Next one has a don't in it and that should be really a clear idea that it is an ethic. And the other one essentially has a do. It does tell us what we should do. So follow the Canadian Food Guide is an example of something people are saying you should do or I believe we should do. And that's just us projecting our ethics. 
The Canada Food Guide is a reliable source of information is a belief, but so is the next one where people believe it's not um, a, a reliable source. They're both beliefs. You may agree with one of them and not the other, um, but they're still beliefs. We're not asking at this point whether you agree or whether you value or whether you think it's a, um, a value that a belief that you uh, give credence to, just identifying it. A person's wellness begins with what they eat. Well, that word begins tells me something is primary, fundamental, or priority. So that's a sense of value. And I only eat whole foods is an ethic. The word only is a really good example of a limiter that you'll often hear in people's ethics. So the second part of the model, you remember, was thoughts, then feelings, then actions. And thoughts are simply what we sometimes call perceptions, observations, wondering, ideas, and even just states of mind like being confused or having um, uh, being in the middle of thought or remembering something or even having a question about something. Those are all thoughts. Beliefs are thoughts, but not all thoughts are beliefs. Here's an example. Peanut butter is tasty, is a thought. I wonder whether we have peanut butter is also a thought, but only the first one is a belief. Peanut butter is tasty is a belief and a thought, but the second one is a thought and a question, okay? We can also think about our thinking, and so now we have a thought about our thinking. So, I have not been very good with my thinking lately, would be an example of this. Some examples, I think the due date is April 30th. I think the weather will improve later today. I have a question about part three. I don't know what I want for lunch yet, and I agree that animals have feelings. Of all of these five, only the last one is also a belief. Feelings are emotions. Sometimes, and in particular we'll see this with some of the people we support, people talk about their physical sensations like being tired or thirsty or hungry or in pain. But typically we're mostly focused on emotions and they can be feelings like sad or emotional states like in love. So, or burned out. So they can be in the moment or they can be into the future or a longer state of feeling. So we want to watch for people who mix up these when they talk. And this is very common. People often say, I feel that you're out to get me. Or I feel that there is no chance I'll be successful. And sometimes they take the word that out and it still means the same thing. I feel Canadian Tire is the best place to get that product. Well, they don't have the word that there, but that's just because they've taken it out as a convention of speaking. They're still telling you a perception. So it's important for us to make sure that we have a clarity around um, feelings versus thoughts framed as feelings. Feelings are usually very concise and very simple in their statements. Usually you can say a feeling in one or two, sorry, in two or three words. I'm sad or uh, I feel happy, and sometimes people use metaphors or similes. A metaphor would be, I'm free as a bird, or a simile would be, I am as happy as a clam, and the word as or like makes it a simile. There are lots of temperatures possible, and the feeling wheel, which I'll put up online, is a document that can help you with this, and there's probably lots of versions of it online as well, so that if I say the word angry, uh, I can find lots of different temperatures from, from annoyed and perturbed all the way up to um, uh, furious or uh, explosive. And so there are lots of different temperatures. And this can be really powerful for us because when we're doing our paraphrasing and reflecting, we might want to find words that are in the same kind of part of the, uh, of the wheel, but actually be working at trying to generate a little bit of de-escalation. Some examples of these, I feel happy, or I've never been more stressed in my life. Uh, this made me feel so good inside, or I feel as fresh as a daisy. So all of those would be examples. Third example, or the third part of this, is the actions. Remember, actions are always behaviors. They mean the same thing. So actions are always observable and concrete, and we can measure them. For example, I can measure how long a person speaks, so it must be a behavior. I can measure how loud you slam the door, so it's a behavior. I can measure how often you sleep in your own bed. That makes it a behavior. But I cannot measure things like, oh, he likes something or he's dreaming about something. I can't even see it, so there's no way for me to measure it. 
I can see a person telling me about that, or in this case, more specifically, I can hear it, but the behavior is telling, not dreaming. I can see a person gazing out the window, but I don't see a person daydreaming. Daydreaming is thought, and it's a perception to me that that might be happening, but looking out the window, well, that's happening. I can see it. Some examples. I'm outside playing fris Frisbee, and you can see how that's based on a feeling. It feels nice. I'm baking muffins is a behavior. It might be based on a physical feeling, like a craving. And the last one, I took a bath and locked the door, and you can see how this one's connected to a thought. I need some time away from my kids. So you can see that thoughts and feelings furnish or lead into certain actions or choices we make to act. So now it's your turn. And once again, I'm going to get you to pause and take a look at these and see if you can identify which of those three things these are. Are they thoughts, feelings, or actions? And then check the next one. Let's see how you did. So this, that is a cute kid and is a thought. You might feel um, uh, warm and fuzzy about that, but it's a thought. I miss my friends. The missing is a feeling. I'm writing a due date is an action. But look at, I plan to call my mom later. It's not an action. It's just a thought. And until it becomes an action, there's a better chance it won't happen. Dang, I forgot to call my mom. Well, there's a thought a person might have because they forgot to call their mom and they should have maybe written it down. Feeling, I'm worried about my mom. And lastly, you can see that the last one has three in it and it was a bit tricky. And they're in this order. Sad is a feeling. Calling is an action. And the thought is that whole last statement. He always makes me laugh. So what the exercise asks you to do is to, they call it working the model, being able to put it all together. And when we work the model, we want to make sure that we are thinking about a subject, in this case, electric cars, and being able to come up with an example under each column or each subject. Now be aware of the fact that there are many, many different things you could say here. There aren't any specific ones. It's about making sure that you have the right type of thing in the right category. So for example, my belief might be that electric cars are better for the environment. I might also value taking care of the environment because it's important to me and you can hear that importance in there. The ethic, the rule I have for myself is I might buy products that are environmentally friendly, including cars. And my thought is, oh, Jim knows a lot about electric cars. Feelings, I feel excited about buying one. And my action is that I'm bringing Jim with me to the car dealership. You can see that a lot of these have something to do with each other, but they aren't all identical. Your six things could be very different and you're welcome to try them and check them with me. You can also do that on the last page of the first reading and send them to me to see if you're on the right track. So here's your turn. Let's see you do it with another one, only this time instead of electric cars, I want you to do it with homelessness and share your answer on Facebook underneath the link to this video. Hope this helps you, but feel free to call me or email me with questions.